at the same time, China's investing a lot of money in the research and development and also in high tech, uh, uh, high tech sectors. And this is mostly on the restructuring of the uh, uh, economy and the other set, uh, other set of measures are targeting specifically on the skewed uh, um, energy picture. Uh, so uh, <coughs> specifically to increase energy efficiency, that means to produce by using less energy and to uh, diversify the energy portfolio to, to increase the share of a clean energy uh, uh, in the uh, country's total <coughs> uh, portfolio. For energy efficiency, and there are also uh, uh, several concrete actions. Like uh, they, uh, the most important one is China has a, a very ambitious energy efficiency national plan that the, the country is planning to reduce the energy intensity by 20% over 2005 level by two. 2010, this is a very ambitious, ambitious. And also China recently revised this energy conservation law and making it uh, like a, a legal, legally bind, binding that the energy conservation uh, the aim should be um, like goal should be inter integrated in all developing plans. Um, as, uh, in order to increase the energy efficiency, the country, the government has launched the several national um, mass the massive uh, scale uh, energy efficiency projects in its key energy intensive sectors. Um, so the, those are the, uh, and the the country also increased the, the financial support for such projects, and those mainly for the energy efficiency, uh, targeting at improving energy efficiency. At the same time, China is trying to increase the share of uh, clean energy sources in the country's uh, whole energy portfolio. So um, in 2006, uh, the country enacted its national renewable energy plan. Uh, uh, renewable energy law, and this law is to encourage the development of renewable energy sources such as solar energy, uh, wind energy, small hydro, and biomass, biogas, and this kind of clean uh, sources of energy into the uh, uh, country's energy supply. And since then, since the implementation of the law, the sector has has uh, taken off, and uh, there, there's uh, the the installation of wind uh, power has uh, doubled for the past the two years uh, and uh, there are great uh, and like the development of wind power has uh, surpassed the plan they, they said like uh, just one year ago for the uh, for a five year period but the the next year and um, the development has already surpassed that plan and so this really uh, perplexed uh, perplexed those decision makers because they have to revisit their plan making and then to uh, to come up with another project and make a, a plan and re re uh, revise the plan uh, like very frequently, so this is uh, for mostly for the renewable energy, and but we have to um, we have to be aware that most of the measures are very top down, top down like regulatory policy and the mandates and all those tools that the government, the central government is using, mm -hmm. and so this is uh, sometimes a prob uh, sometimes problematic because it lacks the incentive from the bottom, from the industries, from local governments. And so it's not out of their will um, because of the uh, problems and, uh, and uh, mistakes, uh, the problems in the uh, pr not getting the price right and don't have the right incentive and this kind of uh, like this kind of things are holding them back. But it does show the political will that the government has. And what stands out is that the, the government is also strengthening its institutional mechanism to tackle with climate change. Like last, well, I just take a, make a comparison. Like uh, we were all excited by a speech given by uh, President-elect Obama saying that um, we, the, the United States is going to address climate change and then we are going to add some clean energy uh, elements into the stimulus package and we were so excited. But in China, this has been the common, uh, the, the common happening. The top leaders like the premier and the president, has, um, the president of China have been strengthening, uh, stressing the importance of addressing climate change on all important occasions. And they have already set up a leading national leading group 
headed by the premier last year with uh, uh, with the general office um, uh, headquartered in the uh, the country's top macro control macroeconomic planning body, and now they have uh, the whole department expanding department dedicated specifically to addressing climate change. In 2007, they released the national plan to address climate change, and in 2008, uh, just the late last year, they released the national white paper on uh, uh, China's actions and policies on climate change and to give a comprehensive overview of what the country is suffering from climate change, what are the, po uh, the current policies and actions the country is doing, and what are uh, potential strate strategies to uh, adopt to deal with the adaptation and mitigation uh, of climate change. And in the at the same time, the, the government also realizes that the key is to get the locals cooperate. And uh, the things that they, they well, uh, it's not in the economic sense that they don't, they don't have the economic incentive, but uh, the government is trying to use the institution, the institutional uh, power to get them coverage. So they make uh, it a, a key benchmark in evaluating local governments, uh, local govern, uh, uh, officials' uh, performance by um, meeting the targets for increasing energy efficiency and uh, reducing uh, emissions. And at the same time, just as Chris mentioned, that the Chinese government is incredibly open for welcoming uh, different voices and suggestions and all those who care about climate change and who want to get work done and who want to push it forward, a concrete step. So I do think that, to be fair, and this, uh, the government deserves its credit. Thanks, Yang Ling. Uh, one of the things that I think is going to be important for the U.S. as we finally get serious about this issue is to draw on the lessons of countries that have gotten well ahead of us in the last uh, a decade or so. And one, well, I think probably the, the best example of that is, is Germany. And um, uh, Janet has, has spent a lot of time studying the, particularly the renewable energy policies in, in, in Germany. So maybe you can tell us, Janet, how did, how did um, Germany, which, um, um, as was mentioned earlier, has, has a you know, basically mediocre set of renewable resources go in just a decade from getting 4% of its electricity uh, from renewable energy to 14% today and reducing uh, CO2 emissions significantly as a result? 